Welcome to Paradigms at Paradigms.life, the radio show and podcast that brings you inspired, inspiring people with visions of a viable future for life on Earth that includes humans. Hi, I'm Baruch, host of Paradigms. Happy to be here with you. Thanks for tuning in. I think you'll find this episode really inspiring and fun and really interesting. My guest is an artist, musical artist, also someone who works with young people, and their personal story is quite amazing. So let's meet this person right now who's doing some really cool stuff on this episode of Paradigms. Emma G, welcome to Paradigms. Welcome to Paradise. It's funny hearing you say that because I'm, <laughs> I'm actually from Paradise. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Paradigms, but close enough. <laughs> oh, no, no, my bad. My bad. <laughs> no, I like that. The Paradise of Paradise, the Paradigms of Paradise. Thank you. It's great to be here. <laughs> it's great to have you. And, you know, I know you go by Emma G, but you have the most amazing last name, if you could just say it for us. Uh, well, officially, it's Emidigamagami. Yeah, I'm not even going to try. But well, I, <laughs> I saw it written <laughs> down and I just thought, wow, that is such a cool name. Thank you. My, 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 my mother thinks so. <laughs> so you're a very interesting person. I'm so glad I'm getting to know you. Uh, you're a musician, you know, so you're an artist, but you're also someone who works, especially with young people mm -hmm. using art as a you're not a therapist, but as a therapeutic tool or an empowerment tool. Yes. And I guess before we get into all of that, which is very interesting, and hear some of your music, what's a little bit your story? Just a little bit of my story? As uh, much as you want to tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, so I'm originally from New Zealand. Um, I was born in a small town, Cambridge, then Raglan, then Hamilton, New Zealand. My mother is from Pennsylvania originally. My father was from Fiji. I was born with a relatively rare neurological condition called hydrocephalus, which means I've had 10 brain surgeries during my lifespan um, and, and 10, 24 surgeries in total. I was blessed to have a mother that was defiantly determined to try to make sure that brain surgery did not mean that I was going to be um, held back. So she did everything she could from the day I was born to making sure that I was given every opportunity to excel, succeed, learn, and grow. Uh, and one of the biggest tools she found was the, the power of music and specifically of songwriting. So I've been writing songs since I was five years old. On my fifth birthday, I wrote a song called School is Cool because I'm a geek uh, <laughs> and proud of it. Um, I, was, I mean, I was making up songs before then, but my mother was the one writing them down. School is Cool was one that I actually wrote myself on the, on the, on the computer. And since then, I've, I've written over 500 songs throughout my lifetime, um, and I've been able to find that songwriting has been specifically, you know, effective to helping my brain development, my cognitive development, but also to helping me overcome my emotional trauma, my physical trauma, my social trauma, you know, and other mental health um, issues that I developed as a result of, you know, being a young woman in this day and age. So I don't know how personal you want me to get, but, uh, you know, I've been very blessed, I think, to have the ability to write songs because that has meant that I can effectively learn new ways to be heard and be seen in a way that is not as confrontational maybe as having a conversation when dealing with um, situations like my ex-boyfriend committing suicide or like my surrogate father dying from um, significant alcohol abuse or from my own histories of depression or of sexual abuse, sexual assault, physical abuse, you know, things that unfortunately we, we like to pray and hope and, and imagine that things don't happen, but they do. And, you know, in fact, I think one in four women are sexually assaulted 
um, every day. And so this is one of the ways, effective ways that I've been able to not just speak up about my experiences, but also be be able to speak about it in a way that doesn't feel scary. You know, having had brain surgery is scary. Being called a Frankenstein or a freak is scary. Being able to, to write and sing about my truth and have people then turn around and say, you're so brave. I'm like, oh, how the tables have turned. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, that's that's a bit about my story of how, you know, I've come to be where I am now. That's the first part of my conversation with Emma G, telling us just a bit of her personal story. Wow, she's been through a lot. And what amazing energy to come through it with. We're going to listen to some music now from Emma G's album, Born in Crisis. And then we'll be back with more of our conversation. Let's start out with the first track on the record. It's called Behind Her Eyes. You're listening to Paradigms at paradigms.life. Not a 
about the storm But what's inside your mind She found her truth deep inside She's back on her fate and ready to fight Behind her eyes It's all a game No one knows who makes the rules Who can say You only hope to see it through But if love is the answer, then baby I hope the question comes soon We're chasing fairy tales and hunting hope for a happy tune Cause if our greatest fear is losing ourselves to a world that does not deserve our world Because you trust in me I'm letting go Of every lie That I've been sold I'm leaning in To every yes And embracing no Cause if love is the why have I always put myself last To give my everything I need To hold on to who I am Cause my greatest fear is losing myself to a world That does not respect my worth But the greatest power is all in the way that I Because you trust in me Cause if our greatest fear Is losing ourselves to a world That does not respect our worth Then the greatest is all in the way that we love and be loved and baby it's you I didn't know how good loving could be baby it's you I couldn't know but you make me believe baby it's you I didn't
Because you trust in me To Love and Be Loved That's Emma G from her album Born in Crisis Before that we heard Behind Her Eyes And now let's get back to my conversation with Emma G And learn a bit more about her music I listened to your record Born in Crisis Yes A couple times over Oh gosh I really want to Really want to get it. And before we talk about the songs, which are all very personal, and if you listen to them, they will hit you, I want to ask you about your guitar playing, because it really stands out. That's because I'm a terrible guitar player. (laughs) 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 My first ever um, song I learned to play on guitar was Wild Thing by the Trogs. And I think that's enough you need to know. (laughs) Okay. It's one of those Um, three chord wonders. Yes. But it's also just very bang away you know when i was in primary school elementary school i had a very small school we had a population of 30 from the age of five up to the age of 12. tiny tiny school uh my principal mary mcdonald uh was clearly a hippie and clearly loved music so every friday at assembly we would be singing songs like yellow submarine hotel california one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. I don't <laughs> like ridiculous music. And again, it was just very strum chords. Uh, so that was kind of where I think the beginning of my influences came. And, you know, I, I've obviously been blessed to be around a lot of other musical influences in New Zealand, in the States, you know, from as much as um, Richard Pickett, who was my surrogate father, Midge Marsden, who's a very well-known um, blues musician in New Zealand, through to the likes of, you know, um, Bobby Borg, uh, the drummer from uh, hard rock band from the 80s. You know, I've just, I've had some incredible, incredible musical influences in my life. However, my first instrument was the violin. My second instrument was the piano. I have always prided myself more on being a vocalist and a songwriter. Guitar was something I picked up because it was easier to carry around than a piano. And so I've I've only had one year of formal training. The rest of my my training has just been me strumming along to guitar, you know, to songs on the radio or or just learning chord progressions. And therefore, I'm not a guitarist. But I fool people into thinking that I'm okay. So that's why I'm born in Christ. <laughs> so much ridiculousity on it. Because <laughs> it doesn't sound like you're banging away. It sounds very deliberate. Now, as a very, very bad guitar player myself, I know that I can record some good licks and string them together and make them sound good. But, mm-hmm. but I want to say you're better than you think you are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. But, but these songs, these are, I mean, they're very simple or uh, musician accompaniment. It, mm-hmm. This is not complicated, heavily produced music. It's very mm-hmm. personal. And each song really feels like you're telling me another bit about you. Mm-hmm. Born in Crisis came as a result of, I set myself a lofty goal back in 2021 to write a song a day for 30 days straight. So that's what I did from the end of January through to the end of February. I wrote a song a day and knowing full well that some of them would be terrible and some of them would be okay. What I wasn't prepared for was the level of honesty that that record has that I didn't know I'd been hiding from. This is the thing about songwriting. I forced myself every day to write a song. I had no idea what was going to come out of me, whether it was a weird chord progression, like with Faith in You, or whether it was like stupidly honest lyrics, like with Miss Me With That. I wasn't prepared for any of it. I was like, okay, let's just see what comes out. Let's just see what the universe (laughs) has to tell me today. And so as a result, I found myself writing, you know, Behind Her Eyes, which was actually meant to be a tribute to one of my super fans, a member of the Imogene Nation, 
but ended up being a sort of a culmination of her story and my story to be the first time I had allowed myself to actually confront an abusive relationship that I had um, a few years back. I wasn't expecting that. Miss me with that was literally inspired by an episode of The Daily Show with Trevor Noah when he was talking about things, you know, like how ridiculous events were happening back then. He's like, oh, you can mess me with that. And so I was like, that's a cool title. Let's see what happens. Uh, so I ended up writing this song and then come to find at the end of the song, holy fish, this entire song is about how people have been judging me my entire life about the fact that I have scars on my body as a result and my head as a result of hydrocephalus. Miss me with those judgments. They're yours to keep. You know? I don't know. It just it just came. It just happened. Well, I think it's just, I mean, firstly, the songs, like I said, they're so personal. Listening to them is really intimate. But the fact that you're a songwriter and you're telling us, you know, this activity of writing songs is part of your healing. And you're showing us how that is so. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. I mean, you know, we relate with recorded music from other people in this world. It's a big deal. We put people on pedestals. Some people are stars and celebrities, all that stuff. And that's like a tiny fraction of who's actually out there making music. Of course. And we're all made of us, so, you know. <laughs> Most of the people making music, writing songs, are people who are telling the bits of their story. Mm -hmm. And most of us will never hear most of that music, but it's out there. It exists in the world. Yours, you know, you've you've managed to do what some other people have done, which is bring together your personal exposition and exploration with the medium that allows it to be shared so that other people can benefit from it. And that, you know, we don't really think about that much. It's so usual. It's so common, but it's actually a big deal. You know, here you are. Well, you're, you know, you're doing your learning, you're on your path, you're doing your thing. And now this can go out to the whole world so that everyone who has access, which is not everyone, but a lot of people can benefit, can learn. I, I, yeah. I, I love this. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think it's, it's been, I was saying this to my partner uh, just yesterday, is it's a, it's been a wild ride because yes, I've been able to live as a full-time musician for the last seven years since I've been living in this country, almost seven years since I moved to the States. In addition to that, however, I and mean, that's an achievement that I need to stop taking for granted, especially through the pandemic. But more importantly, you know, when I, I keep looking back to when I was five, when I wrote School is Cool, and I wrote down what I wanted to be when I grew up. And that list was, I wanted to be a rock star, obviously. <laughs> I wanted to be a counselor. I wanted to be a mother. I wanted to be a teacher. And I wanted to be a fashion designer. And I feel like to be able to now not only perform my own music and, and have people know my songs and be able to make an impact with the lyrics that I'm writing, to now be able to partner that with my youth empowerment through songwriting coaching, I'm able to honor my five-year-old self in a way that didn't exist when I was five years old, you know, because it's an ongoing journey. It's an ongoing kind of how am I wanting to show up for myself and then how can I empower other people to show up for themselves through the lens of my five-year-old dream. I love hearing about how music has impacted Emma and how she's taking this out through songwriting work with young folks to share her own healing process and help others develop theirs. Really good. We'll be back to hear more of this conversation and learn more about what Emma G is doing in her work. Well, let's hear some more music, some more songs from Emma's album, Born in Crisis. This one's called Faith in You. I give you my reasons, but I build my wall. I'm in control when I break my own heart Chase every love song Convinced that it's right Cause I'm in control when I force you to say goodbye But I'm breaking the habit of shutting you down 
Your love is a decision I can't do without I'm breaking up with the past That no longer serves me The trauma that's in my bones Is now only learning I'm breaking up with the fear Leaning into your truth Trying to trust again run away My mask is my smile When deep down I know that there is power in every tear that I cry But if weapons can be turned on me My own knife in my back Baby, can't you understand? I'm learning to stand up and fight back Cause I'm breaking the habit of shutting Love is a decision I can't do without I'm breaking up with the past That no longer serves me The trauma that's in my bones Is now only learning I'm breaking up with the fear Leaning into your truth Trying to trust again Every scar is a 
Miss Me With That, Emma G from Born in Crisis. I love that. Yeah, you can just miss me with that negative stuff. (laughs) Before that, Faith in You, another beautiful, really personal song from Emma G's record, Born in Crisis. What do you think about Emma G, her music, this conversation? I think she's pretty amazing. Love to see your comments. Now here's the next part of my conversation with Emma G. You're listening to Paradigms at Paradigms.life. Let's talk about youth empowerment through music. Yes. What do you do? <laughs> and, and who comes to Eight you questions. and what happens? Okay. Okay. So it's funny that you say that because I literally talk about this in my TED Talk, which I did a couple of weeks back. Um, should be coming online very shortly, which I'm very excited about. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Thank you. So basically, there have been countless studies throughout the entire country world on the therapeutic benefits of music. We're all aware of them. Music has been scientifically proven to elevate our dopamine levels, our oxytocin levels, lowers our cortisol levels, helps with our stress, helps with our clarity, um, helps with our concentration, so on and so forth. We all know this. It's, it's, It's fact these days. Youth empowerment through songwriting, uh, coaching is the yes and approach to that music uh, therapy. So it's it's important that we, we we take hold of the creative relevance that music gives us. And I say that because I know that a lot of schools, unfortunately, don't necessarily hold music in high regard as much as they could, or in my belief should. So what what I what I do is I take that that music. And now we have a lens through which young people can start to learn more effectively about themselves. There is a philosophy in many different cultures and religions and belief systems that we all hold our answers within us. We all know our truth. We all know what's right and wrong intrinsically within us. We all know what's right and wrong for us. We are often so bombarded with outside influences that we lose track of that core truth within us. So to partner songwriting with music, it's allowing young people permission to don the superhero cape is what I call it, or the mask, the costume, whatever, um, of music to help them be honest with themselves again, to help them find the languaging to communicate effectively, to help them give themselves permission to speak their truth, to help them, you know, just be them. Here's the tricky part, however, and this is where music and songwriting, the the marriage between music and songwriting is so beautiful, because when you have elevated levels of dopamine and oxytocin, as well as lowered levels of cortisol, our amygdala and our um, nucleus accumbens work in tandem, which is the, the parts of our brain. Uh, they work in tandem with each other to actually help us rewrite our emotional responses to the events that have happened to us. So when we use music and songwriting together, we can now, instead of sitting in our funk, sitting in that space of life is terrible, why me, everything is hard, why was I the one born with hydrocephalus, none of my friends have had brain surgery, none of my friends have even broken a bone, let alone been to hospital, you know, why is it that I'm the one that was sexually assaulted, or why are my parents divorced, you know, whatever it is. Now, through marrying songwriting and music together, you can turn that around and say, oh, okay, this has happened to me. I've been called a freak my entire life. I'm going to wave that freak flag proudly. And I'm going to give other people permission, who, other people who feel out of place, permission to wave their freak flags. And what do you know? Now I build a community around myself. Or I have been told my entire life that I'm too much or that I'm too loud, or that I'm too abrasive, true story. Um, You know, that can be hurtful. Or 
it can literally, you know, I can I can use trigger my nucleus comments in my amygdala to rewrite that programming to be like, okay, we're clearly not reading the same book. Jog on while I find my real people. And as a result, I've been able to find this community of, of beautiful other freaks who just like love unapologetically and stand in their authentic truth and strive for the stars and you know, do all the things that they want to do because I'm doing all the things that I'm wanting to do. Marianne Williamson says it perfectly, you know, it is our light, not our darkness that scares us most. Who are we to shine bright? When in fact, who are we not to, right? And so songwriting gives me and other young people that I work with or, or not work with, gives them permission to shine their brightest unapologetically without feeling scared. Now, a lot of people are probably listening thinking, I could never write a song. And what I want to say is we've all listened to music at one time or another that did some of what you're talking about. And for some reason, I think of Joni's Blue. How many right. people have listened to that record and used it in their own emotional healing? Like millions. Mm -hmm. And you're just taking it the next step and yep. making it personal. Yep. Yep. I mean, Joni Mitchell, phenomenal songwriter. I think I've met one person who didn't like music, and that was an awkward date that I went on years ago. <laughs> it didn't go well. But um, most people turn to music when they're feeling some type of way. Imagine if the songs that you're listening to, though, are the songs that you've written. Because now you're not just taking on the fight song, I need a hero, you know, or or Wasted Years by Iron Maiden or whatever it is. You're no longer singing someone else's fight song. You're writing and singing your own fight song that you wrote about you and your journey and your badassery and your grit and, and integrity and all the things that make you magical, you know? You don't even have to record the thing. The fact that you've written it for yourself now means that you've, it's not just an affirmation in your head. You're not just saying, I believe I am, therefore I am. Now you're saying, I am because I damn well said I am, you know, but you're singing it and the music helps to just trigger that. It's, it's, it's powerful, I think, <laughs> but I'm biased. <laughs> We're all injured in different ways. And for those of us who I think most people try to find some ways to heal, when we do find something that heals us, when we find something that works for us and then we can share it, mm -hmm. it just makes it more so for everyone, including okay. ourselves. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, so as you do this work with people, you're continually affirming your own healing and your own voice. And so it just keeps building on itself. Yep. Pretty yep. Cool. Exactly. Pretty cool. Stay tuned for the final part of my conversation with Emma G after we hear some more music from her record, Born in Crisis. This one's called From the Ashes. Your way. 
rise from the ashes Step Into Your Power, Emma G., from her record Born in Crisis. Before that, we heard From the Ashes. You can tell from these songs, from our conversation, Emma is someone who has faced some really significant adversity and moves through it with grace and power and intention, something we can all do, hopefully, at some points in our life. We all face adversity, and we all can move through it with grace and power at least a little bit. And Emma is teaching young folks how to do it even more. Really, really great. Here's the final part of my conversation with Emma G. I want to talk to you about the world. <laughs> a world? The, okay. I like okay, the world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here we are. It's this week with what's happening now. Mm-hmm. And we're all doing our lives and also paying attention in some way or other to things outside of us that we have responses to, feelings about, thoughts about. And I just wonder, how are you doing with all this? What are your thoughts? How are you processing what you're experiencing? That's a heavy question. (laughs) It's a heavy time. 
It is a heavy time. I feel like the last five years have been a heavy time. The last 20 years have been a heavy time. <laughs> is a track on the Born in Christ album called The Wolf I Feed. The Wolf I Feed was written inspired by the Native American tale of the grandfather talking to his grandson about the two wolves that live inside of us constantly fighting. One is the wolf of fear, anger, um, bigotry, hatred, hurt. The other wolf is the wolf of love, compassion, empathy, and positivity. The grandson asks the grandfather, if these two wolves are fighting all the time, how do you know which one wins? And the grandfather responds, whichever wolf you feed. That has been my approach even before I knew of the Native American tale to basically everything that has happened in my life, going back to my first brain surgery, going back to 9-11, going back to everything. You know, the world is a hard place to live in. I personally am an empath. And so I take on energy from other people really easily. I live in an apartment building in Chevy Chase, Maryland. And this apartment building has a lot of embassy people who live here. So there are multiple people from the Ukraine in this building, multiple people from Russia and beyond who live in my building. I I say hello to them every day. And of course, DC in itself is a very multicultural, transient city. I am a child of multicultural ethnicity myself, having, you know, my mother's from Pennsylvania, her mother's Norwegian, her father was Iranian, my father was Fijian, I was born in New Zealand. I say that all to mean that the way that I'm navigating this time is very similar to how I navigated every other traumatic event. All I can do is first and foremost, make sure that my cup is full first. Because if I'm empty, I can't give to those around me. Secondly, my next thing is to make sure that my immediate community is at least feeling supported, loved, validated, and important. The fact that there have been Russian-owned businesses terrorized across America as a result of what is happening in Russia breaks my heart. That is not the way that we should be navigating this. People are people. They are not their governments. If that was the case, then all of Americans have suddenly changed a new leaf in the last, you know, (laughs) six months. Yeah. I am incredibly hopeful that the United Nations, the NATO, that the UN will help to come up with a way forward in a way that doesn't hurt, harm, or negatively affect too many people. I'm incredibly inspired by the Ukrainian people, but I really want to pay most attention to making sure that the example I'm leading is one of equity, one of justice, one of trust, as in I'm somebody who is safe to approach, and one of just like super compassion because everyone's hurting right now. I also want to add to that that I wish that we were having these same conversations when these events were happening in Afghanistan, in Syria, in Sudan, you know. Iraq. These Iraq, of course, Iraq. I think this is a really beautiful time in some ways for us to reflect back on how we treat all terrorism, not just that on people of lighter color. Emma G., I love what you're saying. I love your music. I love what you're doing. I'm so glad we connected. Likewise. Thank you so much for being on the show, for doing this work. Back at you. Times 100. You know, the world needs more light. And so it's, it's wonderful to be able to meet other lights who are just doing the damn thing and spreading as much sunshine and and positivity um, as you. So I appreciate you. Emma G., thank you so much for being on Paradigms, for talking with me about what you do. Really love hearing about it and enjoy so much the conversation with you. Emma is a high-energy, high-intention, creative, service-oriented person. She's just doing good stuff in the world. What Emma's doing would be amazing if she hadn't faced the adversities 
she's faced, but she has. So, wow. If you'd like to know more about Emma G, learn more about her youth empowerment through songwriting, listen to her whole record, learn more about her personal story. Her website is emmagmusic.com. Really simple. E-M-M-A-G music.com. Definitely check her out. Learn more about what she's doing in the world. Be inspired. Thank you, Emma. And if you enjoyed this episode of Paradigms, I hope you'll check out our archives, where there are over 520 other episodes to listen to, at our website, paradigms.life, and in iTunes, and wherever else you find your podcasts, and also now on YouTube. Just search for Paradigms Podcast. Paradigms has a Patreon campaign going. Go to patreon.com slash paradigms. Become a supporter. We really appreciate our Patreon supporters. The world keeps turning. Humans keep doing what humans keep doing. I like to tell myself that more and more humans are on the side of peace and justice and fairness. Some days it's easier to believe that than others. But I keep focusing on doing my little bit that makes a difference. And I'm sure everyone listening does their little bit that makes a difference. That's how we make the world a better place for everyone. The word for the week, empowerment. Empower yourself to be your best self and do that little bit that makes a difference. That's what we can each do. Empowerment. I'm going to leave you with one more song from Emma G's album, Born in Crisis. Emma talked about this one. It's called The Wolf I Feed. Baruch signing off for Paradigms. We'll see you next time. Until then, empowerment and be well.
you've been listening to Paradigms at paradigms.life. <laughs>